Journalists worldwide are trying to find and film these men, mercenaries of the so-called Wagner Group. They are members of a ruthless gang that commits bloody crimes all over the world to support Russian interests. It seems unusual that a crack Belarusian squad arrested these mercenaries allied to Russia in July 2020. All 33 men were quietly deported to Russia just hours later. Today, both sides act as if nothing ever happened, but the pictures were out there in the world, and with them, the definitive proof that the dreaded Wagner group really exists. Badges on their uniforms betray the work these men do. Their business is death, and business is busy for them right now. Ukraine, 2014. For days, the world puzzled over who the so-called green men were who took Crimea in a coup d'etat. Afterwards, they fought on the side of Russian separatists in the Donbass. The men had no sovereignty insignia on their uniforms. Today, we know some of these units belonged to the Wagner Group. The mercenary force owes its name to Dmitry Utkin, a former Russian elite soldier and self-confessed neo-Nazi. He shared with Adolf Hitler a fondness for music by the composer Richard Wagner. Only a few photos of Utkin exist. In 2016, he was awarded a medal by President Putin for his service in Ukraine. And this despite the fact that the Kremlin denies any connection with the Wagner mercenaries to this day. These mercenary soldiers take on the tasks that are war crimes and which regular troops refuse to perform. And now the Wagner group is said to be active again in the Ukrainian war. So I've read and heard from various sources that Wagner mercenaries are most likely active again in Ukraine and that there are sabotage groups. There is a suspicion that President Volodymyr Zelensky, Kiev Mayor Vitaly Klitschko and a whole series of female and other politicians are their assassination targets. Of course, that would fit into this picture that Putin wants Zelensky gone and that he hopes to accomplish regime change in Ukraine. But of course, we can't ultimately verify it 100%. However, I think it's quite possible. Currently, the mercenaries are mainly active in Africa, like here in the Central African Republic, after they committed a massacre of mine workers. In Mali, the Wagner mercenaries are looking to fill the space that will soon be left there after the French army leaves. Their tasks are exactly the same in Africa as in Ukraine, destabilization and destroying democracy. Some Malians have shown their gratitude to the Wagner group. But wherever the Russian mercenaries have operated, they have always been extremely brutal. And whatever support they have here for the time being will probably not last long. Well, for more now, I'm joined by John Spencer. He's an urban warfare expert as well as a veteran. It's good to have you on the show, John. I just want to ask you, why does Vladimir Putin have to rely on what we've seen here, private mercenaries, to achieve his aims in Ukraine when... He's the leader of what's supposed to be one of the most powerful and largest militaries in the world. Yeah, it's a good question. Powerful is the key word in that statement. It's a really big army, but not that powerful, and shown the world that they're not what they could, what we thought they would be. Throwing mercenaries into combat operations like this in Ukraine is the act of the weak. It is a desperate move to add combat power to units that are falling apart. And we're seeing that. We're seeing Russian units refusing to fight, driving their own vehicles into the mud, running over their officers. That's what happens when you lose the will to fight, you lose cohesion, you don't have no trust in your leaders. So this is an act of weakness. You have said that it takes a ratio of about five to one all the way up to 10 to one in favor of the attackers if they want to take over a city, what makes it so hard to conquer a city? Yeah, so that's historical across time. Um, we usually say three to one if you're attacking a defender in the open, five if not more, depending on the situation of the urban, is because 
the defense is always strongest. If you can stand in a protective position, somebody has to cross the street, cross the open area to get to you, of course, you're going to be vulnerable to attack. In the urban terrain, it's just tenfold because all the buildings are natural bunkers. Matter of fact, in Mariupol, you know what makes a really good bunker? A bombed out building. So it's almost a paradox of urban warfare. We know that rubble is like bomb proof bunkers. So you're going to need more forces and you're going to lose thousands to take. You can't bomb cities into submission. So that's the other point. Is you not only need a lot of forces, you have to go in if you want to take it. But that's what the Russians are trying to do with Mariupol, isn't it? And um, maybe what you're talking about explains why we have seen the, the Russians unable to take Kiev. Yeah, they didn't even get, they got to the gates. Right. But luckily, Kiev, Kiev defending it well, they couldn't even get into position to begin to attack Kiev. So they didn't even get past the gates. Um, you know, even if you were to do this with a lot of forces, there are things you had to do. You had to surround and isolate Kiev. They never got past really the their initial positions. Many of them couldn't even get to their initial positions to isolate the city, let alone attack it. And let's talk then about what we're seeing in Mariupol. I mean, what's your assessment? How long can the Ukrainian people, Ukrainian forces withstand this nonstop bombardment from the Russians? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the underground has always been the refuge of urban defenders. So, I mean, more concern to me is the lack of water as they've been sieged for weeks now and, and the impact that has. But, you know, soldiers and, you know, motivated defenders can go a long time and suffer a lot for a cause. Um, could they survive the bombings? Absolutely. They could survive the bombings for a long time. But the, like you said, the Russians are inside. There's yeah. some elements that have penetrated, separating um, the defenders in different segments. But again, I still think, well, so the, to answer the question is they could survive weeks, is depending on what stockpiles they have inside the city. Um, and if Mother Nature continues to help by like rain and mm. snow and things like that to help give water, um, the Russians, no matter what, will pay a high price. Okay. John Spencer, urban warfare expert. John, it's been good talking with you. Um, valuable context about what's happening in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you.